Okay, good morning, everyone. I just did a quick, I guess, rehearsal uh, with the mute on, and I am streaming live again, looking like I have everything good to go. I'm streaming a little uh, early, and it's pre-recorded for our second Sunday this month because it is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you out there at, that are, you know, nurturing and loving on something, whether it be, you know, your kids, your pets, your plants, each other at this point, you know, it's an amazing time to celebrate a good mother, right? Or 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 mother that's really trying. And if you're new to me, uh, my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I have been teaching for about 12 years on helping assist with raising the consciousness of the planet, helping, you know, unpack all of our dirty laundry and our baggage and have reconcile a lot of our trauma that interferes with our ability to be happy and, um, you know, our ability to navigate without sabotage. And, you know, that's really where that comes from. So today I really wanted to dive in in this idea that we are approaching the middle of the year. And it's a very significant point because the, the year 2022 is all about the rude awakening and the catch 22. I know you've probably even said that out loud to yourself this month. It's like, this is a catch 22. I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Well, it's also the rude awakening because all of the work that we have done on ourselves, whether it's certifications, coaching, you know, the philosophy, the books, uh, the modalities, the classes, uh, the counseling, the therapy that we have given and received, it's all coming full circle right now. And there's probably a lot of areas in your life by now that you feel that you have really mastered, that you feel like you have certainty, that you understand the truth, that you, 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 get, you get it, it's clicking. And then there's some areas in your life where you're probably like, I can't at all find my spiritual mastery here. I feel, um, you know, asleep here. I feel judgment. I feel uncertain. I feel unsafe in certain areas of your life. And that's why in my teachings, I always break things down in time, relationships, health and money, because we are really in a relationship with our virtual reality here. And the way that you relate to things is really having to do with your level of awareness, not consciousness, but your awareness is either um, provoked by your ability to see things clearly in flow, or it's, it's blocked by trauma and pain and suffering and separation and lack, right? So we are kind of feeling probably like a little bit torn in a lot of areas where we're feeling very woke and then we're feeling like I should be further along or I should know this or I should have this or, you know, I, I, I should have accomplished this by now. And that shoulda really is a sticky icky, right? That we we're working a lot in our alchemy mastery class right now and this concept of the frequency of shame and guilt on this planet. So again, if you're new to me, my name is Jessica Alstrom. Uh, for the past, I don't know, forever, it feels like I have had an online academy that I do focus on um, accelerating of human consciousness, but also working on uh, really improving the quality of our lives through integrating the lower parts of our consciousness and healing those parts of us that we are unaware in our blind spots. Um, that's illness, suffering, sickness, judgment, you know, worry, fear, guilt, shame, humiliation, all those lovely, you know, ideas of grief that we're carrying in our backpack full of rocks that's heavy that we don't even know is there, and it seems to be triggered. So today's message is really about kind of that middle of the year message. And I really kind of want to break this down so that, you know, all of you guys that are, that are on your journey can really take a marker point. You know, we we teach deeply in, in our academy that we never take score, that we take stock. Because when we take score, we're never going to be really where we want to be because we're growing and we're evolving and we're becoming more. So the more you become, the more you want to become. So you, you, you will be satisfied. You will be happy. You will have joy. But that will create new pockets and levels and, and new opportunities for you to increase that, not from a need, not even from a want, but just an evolving space of business. And as we approach kind of this middle point of the year, we just went through it a really intense energy, you know, back in 2021, December of 2021 was really, a, a, it was a gift that we have all kind of moved into this threshold of, 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 uh, 
of zero cosmic karma. And now we're moving into the deeper layers of clearing out conscious body karma and unconscious body karma and collective karma. So our body karma, karma with each other, right? Karma with other bodies, right? Other things, other bodies of things like bodies of water, bodies of, you know, your homes, bodies of, of anything that is a bodied, embodied, which means if your consciousness is involved, it's embodied. So, you know, again, we teach in those time relationship, health and money platforms to kind of identify that we can be very woke in certain areas and we can be very, uh, very much a student of our own pain in others. And it does not, it, it does not dis embody our work you know it's it's not about having everything perfect and then you know judging ourselves it's about allowing certain things to be able to carry us and pick us up where other areas of us are weak and and not putting that all into a clump and taking score on well i'm not where i want to be in some areas you are you know if you really took stock right now you're living a lot of your dreams hopefully. Um, and if you, if, if those things that are still unfulfilled are, you know, in your conscious awareness, all that means is that there is a separation point, aka trauma or pain that is blinding you from being able to integrate that and move back into the flow. So today's message is really about the science of microdosing. And no, I'm not just talking about DMT and mushrooms. I'm talking about life, okay? So I always teach in this idea and this platform that you're working to integrate your three main levels of consciousness. Now, your main levels of consciousness is broken down into the me, myself, and I. And the four levels of consciousness is the unconscious, the subconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. So you are literally kind of working with those three outward elements of creation versus your four um, deeper understandings of your layered consciousness. And together that makes seven. So we're constantly working in a seven year cycle to either advance our master level of consciousness, or we are using that platform of seven years to create almost like a zip drive of everything that has happened. So every seven years, basically everything that has happened or could happen, whether it be conscious, subconscious, super conscious is recorded almost like on a zip drive and it is buried down into your physical density of consciousness, which means it's almost like the zip drive gets all of your information and it goes into all the way down into the deepest parts of you, including your bone marrow. All right. So all of your stories, your unfulfilled, your failures, your successes, your loves, your heartbreaks, your four emotions, your feeling backward steps are all basically kind of recorded every seven years on a zip drive and then downloaded into basically the mainframe of you. And that creates a lot of belief systems, personality identifications, you know, as you get older, you get more tired or you build up more walls around people or you feel more sensitive or you feel less sensitive, you feel more numb. And you'll notice that if your life is working in seven year cycles, you can see where the parts of you that have been zip drived, right, are, are below the surface. OK, so you're noticing in 2022 that the trauma that seems to be surfacing for us to be healed at this time because the, the Earth's gravitational pull is becoming so polar shifted that it is really uprooting a lot of our unconsciousness. So we have been working really diligently for, I would say, the last five or six years in the subconscious level. And that is your memories, that's your identification of projection and reflection, that's your storyline, that's kind of your script, that's your character, that's the people around you, that's kind of how you're living, where you're living, where you could possibly live. But as we get down deeper into that unconscious place, you're dealing with blind spots that 
that you don't even know are there. It's not like when you have a car and you know where your blind spot is. This particular uh, idea of our consciousness is so below the surface that even if we reached down, we couldn't find it in that way. We've got to wait for it to start to bubble up in order for us to start to process the things that we have basically, you know, zip drived into our consciousness. And this would be the area of your, you know, birth experience, pre-birth experience, your your post birth, your post death experiences, your past life experiences, your lineages, your bloodlines, the collective blueprint of the planet, you know, um, Mother Earth herself, the stories of our own evolution, our our stories of our own, you know, de ascension, our stories of our moving into ascension are going to be really deep under the surface. So it's like the idea of the abyss in water. You know, you know, you be in the deeper waters where where we can study, but then we know that there is a surface below that surface and there is an abyss below that that is still unreachable if, if, if it's not kind of meeting, at least coming up. So we're noticing, all of us, that this particular year, all of our hard work that we thought, oh, we're going to be living the dream, you know, we're going to be in 5D, we're going to be, you know, building our own realities here, which you are. But you're, it feels still a little bittersweet because as you increase your vibration, you are uprooting through this idea of gravity. The higher you're going, the more you're able to uproot and unpack basically that zip drive. It's like, you know, this is the year where we're putting the zip drive in and we're seeing what is on that zip drive. And we're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know. And, and you won't know in the direct feedback of what you're getting as that zip drive starts to kind of play in your reality, it's going to appear different because you're different. You know, if it, if a past life you were burned on the stake, maybe in this life you're dealing with eczema, you know, if, and you're, you know, you're, you have, you know, um, really horrible inflammation and, you know, arthritis and, and it's flaring up all of a sudden, you know, maybe you're dealing with an autoimmune disease that was gone for a really long time and now it's coming back. And when we look at the identification of autoimmune disease, it has a thread of old past line suicides or self mutilation or self abuse that now is the body attacking itself. So there's so much to discover in what is actually manifesting for you right now, even though, thank goodness, we don't have to get burned at the stake this time for our beliefs or, you know, um, hung on the cross for, you know, what we believe in. Although I'm sure by now, most of you have feel you've been there a few times, especially with your loved ones. And it feels like if we are going to get burned at the you know, stake or the cross, it's the people that have been closest to us, our intimate relationships, into me, I see. And that's why it hurts so much, right? So then that hurt kind of comes back full circle in new relationships after three, four months. It comes back into jobs. It comes back into our money line. It comes back into our body health. And it is all like divinely designed for you to be able to unpack it with all of the work that you've done, because there's no way that we would be able to confront, understand, have the level of a conscious awareness if we hadn't been studying super consciousness all this time. See, we've been like, ooh, super consciousness, my clairvoyance, my clear audio, you know, the divine matrix, the ability to channel the, you know, the identification of my star family or my, you know, my, my star lineage. If we had not really kind of integrated the higher level of our consciousness, there's no way that we would be able to be brave enough aware enough, strong enough, emotionally and mentally to unpack what is coming for us. And I don't, I don't mean that to, to scare or worry. It's almost like, you know, you've been on the vacation and you've seen what is possible. Now you got to return to the house and clean it up so you can move out of that house and move into your dreams. And that's a really good metaphor because it's like, 
I just went through a major move myself. I'm unpacking and, you know, you realize how much crap you have. You realize like all these things that like your past is there, old memories, you know, you don't really know what to do with it. It's like, you don't want to bring it with you, but you don't know if you should keep it. And that's really kind of where we are mid year. And as we went through kind of this idea of this resurrection energy of March and April, where we're really kind of coming into our own, well, now it's almost like, okay, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know what I can create. I know that that my dreams are are right there. Like I can feel them. I can, I can like almost taste it. But first, I've got to clean up this dirty, this dirty room that's now playing as if someone put in my zip drive and it started appearing on all these TVs, like when you go to a sports bar and you're just like, oh my gosh. And it will come in the form of a lovely trigger. So anytime you're triggered, this is a moment of really high consciousness right now. If you can look at a trigger and say, my unconscious stuff is just being triggered or activated or brought to the surface. And instead of reacting, you know, to the trigger and defending yourself and then, you know, projecting onto someone else, it's a really fast way to integrate this trigger as stopping, taking a pause, asking what it feels like, asking, you know, where else this has occurred in your life, and then begin to pull the thread inwardly into your own consciousness instead of take this trigger and now put it back into physical reality because we know quantumly what we focus on, we become. And so if I take my trigger and I puke it out and project it all over and call 15 people and involve activities and body action, then all I'm doing is reinstalling the download into my conscious awareness reality that I'm projecting. And therefore I am now including that into my virtual reality, even though I don't want it, law of resistance says it is. So ideally what we want to do is be able to, with the highest level of the consciousness that we have received with the work that we've done, we want to be able to, to put that suit on and dive down deep into the abyss, whether it's through a trigger or through, you know, my microdosing program that I have to help you kind of get in there and not be so triggered and so terrified and so adrenalized that you're not present in the moment that you're reacting from an earlier similar event and the rage you couldn't have back then you have now and it's getting dumped on your physical reality which now creates a signature of who you believe you are in physical reality and now virtual reality becomes that which you believe. So this is like a really crucial time where we become a player of virtual reality versus the creator of virtual reality. And we are completely unlimited in our, our ability to tap into the quantum field. We are completely unlimited to heal the body or and stop the aging process and its tracks, heal everything and anything you could possibly think of. But see, in order for the, for the you that is creating that would have to believe that. And I know that there is a lot of you that does believe that. But if there are parts of you hidden in the shadows, the abyss that don't believe that because you are suffering in those stories and you are in the past where you have been hurt and you are noticing that the mirror is aging and you notice that people around you are, you know, are, are disappearing, then it isn't a full vibrational match to creator. It's more of like a half and half where you're going to get half creation, half bittersweet manifestations. Like you're starting to live the life you want, but you don't have access to the body the way you want it to be. So if you're noticing that, your real job here is to take your highest level of consciousness and use that as your suit to dive down deep into the lower parts of your abyss and start basically unpacking from a conscious space of allowing and witnessing and accepting that that part of you that you've been resisting, avoiding, disassociating from, blaming, refusing is, is allowed to come to the surface and mix in all together, right? And therefore the darkness and the light becomes the shadow. This is why I teach in the past, present, future. I teach in the me, myself, and I. Because ultimately there is a version of you that we call the I am or the higher self that is the future you. 
that is literally in your conscious awareness. Now there is a past version of you that is stuck in pain, death experiences, trauma, uncertainty, mystery, lack of closure, denial, rejection, abandonment, um, shame and guilt that is also very much vibrating in your field. And their lowest part of you and the highest part of you have created what's called a mediator, or I like to call the microdoser. All right. So the mediator or the microdoser is the salvation here because the highest point of you does not vibrate with the lowest point of you, nor do they want to be in the same room. You know, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker do not want to be in the same room together. OK, so they're going to need a mediator. They're going to need something that is going to be a signature of both of them, yet that is completely neutral in its essence, that is not judging one bad or good. And this is why a lot of times when marriage is about to end, they'll get marriage counseling because they need that mediator. They need that person who's non-biased, who doesn't really care about the outcome so much as resolution and reconciliation from an understanding point of unconditional love. And therefore, that's where we have the myself version of you. And I call that the inner child, because regardless of how bad your mom and dad were, there is a part of you that still loves them and still loves people who have hurt you and still wants adventure, no matter how much money you've lost in the past, still wants love, no matter how many times your heart's been broken. And that is going to be your true salvation, which is why I do so much teaching about the inner child part of you. I feel like we've done our work with the superconscious. We know who our higher self is. We know more about what's going on in the cosmos than we know what's going on here. And now it's time for us with that certainty, with that trust, with that knowing, with those abilities, with those answers, be able to stand in our dirty laundry in the darkest parts of ourselves and be able to reparent and repurpose and reconcile and reinvent the darkness because this is not about letting that go. <clears throat> this is about integration. This is about finding the soul signature of the darkest part of you that is the same as the highest part of you that made the child and coming together as one and being a force that is nature itself, because nature is both destructive and life-giving. It is both dark and light. It is, it is both perpetrator and victim. It is both creator and destroyer. And therefore, you are exact blueprint of that. And denying any part of that is just going to keep it buried. And it's going to come out when you least want it to or expect it, especially in a new relationship, new environment, right when you start manifesting all of your dreams. It's going to come out and boy, does it. OK, so the, the science of microdosing is why I am now opening up real live locations again. I opened wellness centers back in the early 2000s, 2014 and 15. And then we realized that we wanted to teach instead of put our hands on thousands of people and have them keep coming back. I, everyone is a healer. Everyone is an alchemist. I had more fun teaching than I did laying hands eight hours a day and burning out in paths. Right. So as I've moved through the cycle of moving into my last teaching, which is the Alchemy Master Program, I am now opening my doors and teaching microdosing live. So the science of microdosing is not only about medicinal, physical medicine. It is about the relationship that you're having with yourself. Humans are extremists. We are all or nothing. If we're low, we want to get high. OK, if we're high, it means we're going to go low. And this is where we get trapped in addiction <clears throat> and your human brain is an addictive element because it is a problem solver. It is an inventor. It is a survivor. And so whatever you're doing, it's going to take it to the extremes. So if you're going high, low, all or nothing back and forward, then your brain becomes very used to you and how you operate. And most of us that are very low, all we want to do is get high so we don't have to feel the low and and the, the most of the time all we're getting now if you guys notice is you're really not getting as high as you want to you're getting relief because the relief is designed to be your mediator so we have come full circle in our spiritual journey from the the medicator 
to the meditator, right? I can guarantee all of you guys have gone from medication, whether it's through a person, place or thing, shopping, whatever, wake and bake lifestyle, right? All the way into deep trance meditation where, you know, you want to live. If I could live in meditation, I would, right? And, and we're noticing that those are still extremes, not that we don't want to medicate when we need to or meditate when we, you know, when we have the time, but using it as an extreme keeps your body in a high low cycle and keeps you searching for the high and pushing down the low. And this keeps you in separation of yourself, no matter how spiritual you are. And what we're doing in alchemy, alchemist, is we're including all of ourselves, all of me, into the equation, the me, myself, and I, and we're learning that the way that we quantum leap the quickest is to do it through a form of mediation and microdosing, right? So I've had the pleasure of working with some really amazing people over the year who I would consider um, you know, high levels of trauma are are amazing veterans on this planet that were sent off and, you know, given a lifestyle that, you know, none of us would want to have and had to kind of wrap their awareness around that life. And then they were thrown back into civilian life and that brain wired for defense and protection and adrenaline and survival coming back into a house full of kids and having to sit in a cubicle is a recipe for suicide, as we have seen. And the same with a child who has experienced high levels of trauma. You know, you put that child into a healthy relationship, she's pretty much probably gonna destroy it, right? I've, I've done that successfully many times. And because that's what we do, that's what our trauma does, right? So what I've, I've learned over the years is that when we take someone who has extreme trauma or extreme pain or extreme lack or extreme suffering or extreme anything, and I know where their needs are, they want to go all the way to the end of the spectrum and have that instant gratification. When we take them through the, the journey of the mediation and we enter not the medication, but whatever it is we're using, whether it's our, our unconscious work or subconscious work or our, our play-based work or our child inner therapy or our super conscious quantum work, we're realizing is that when we introduce it as a daily, consistent, disciplined routine, the child begins to feel safe. The medicine, whether whatever form we're using, energy, you know, or supplements, we're learning that slowly integrating in is bringing the level of consciousness higher consistently than ever from an extreme jump. All right. So going into a trance meditation is equivalent to the brain of, of doing heroin. Now, obviously, the side effects are going to be way different, but the brain gets extremely into that theta gamma place and it wants more of that. And that is fantastic as an understanding that your brain is a pharmacy and can produce that at any time you require as creator, you can summons that. But we also know what the side effects of the also does. And some of you may not understand that, you know, hours of meditation also, also zap your serotonin. Okay. Because your body is running energy. It's not like you're bad. We're taking your serotonin. Your body's just using it. And therefore, when you cannot create your own serotonin, you don't feel safe. So serotonin is our inner child. It's, our, our, it's, it's the way that we feel safe and protected so I can play on the floor. And I'm not worried about who's coming to get me. It, it's allowing me to create in the moment. It's allowing me to feel safe in the moment. But most of us haven't had access to our serotonin or at least our own serotonin in years because of our stress responses. And so we live on a sub, uh, like a pseudo, which is dopamine. And dopamine is like your instant relief. It's your quick hit. It's your, let me call a friend, you know, let me buy something. Let me, you know, go take another class. Let me spend money on classes because I'm not good enough. Let me do something. But you'll notice that dopamine runs out and therefore you're going to have to bring in from an outside perspective, more dopamine every time you feel disappointed or your expectations are not met. 
And this is what's causing this high and low in our spiritual culture. So what we're learning is that when we microdose and we start to build the serotonin back into the body's mainframe, the brain remembers that it used to carry it and it has access to its own form of dopamine through its own thought form, then we're learning, although we're supplementing from an outside memory of a plant or, or a activity or a modality or a process, we're introducing it consistently at a repetitive level. And we're noticing we're only giving the brain enough to remember how to do it itself and to feel safe in the present moment so that it can be here with all of this medication. So it's like me this morning, I wake up, I'm like, oh, as soon as I drink my little cup of coffee, super mom here, I feel like I can go into my room and clean it up, you know? And yes, that's a placebo and all of that wonderful thing. But, you know, the idea of caffeine, just a little bit, well, not you saw how big my cup is, but enough for me. Now, if I drink 10 cups of that, I won't be able to function, right? My body will be like this, but I'll be tired. So, you know, it's, it's like this idea of just enough but we live in a culture of more, 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 more. And I believe that's part of the mainframe programming is that you just need more. You just need more. And the ego needs more constantly. So one cup is not giving me what I need. So 10 cups must be better. And now I can't function at all and nothing's getting done. And I have anxiety and I'm having panic attack and my heart's racing, but I have no energy to do anything. So as we're learning the science of microdosing or not, I wouldn't say learning, but we are remembering that in moderation with a mediator and microdosing, then although it's not sexy and feels a little bit boring, you're going to have the most intense quantum leaps that you've ever experienced because you're not going 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. You're going two steps forward and two steps forward and two steps forward because the past version of you and the future version of you are running in opposite directions and your inner child is trying to hold it all together. And if you understand, if you are a mother, whether it's up to a plant or a child or an animal, consistency is actually how you create safety. And so it's about consistency. So in June and July of 2022, I am opening up these centers called Quantum Fitness and our, our old school apothecaries where we are going to be offering everything from energy medicine at a microdosing level that will affect change faster than going into a very expensive weekend retreat where you get your system blown out and then you don't have to try to recover from that extreme healing weekend or that extreme motivational weekend. See, the science is about consistency and it's about reintroducing into the body what it actually needs to be able to heal itself, know itself, be with itself, love itself. And through that science, we have realized that it is about physical action, but it is also about finding the frequencies that our body is unable to make by itself because of our fight or flight programming and introduce them slowly into the body. So this story of this guy um, that, I, that I knew, he was a big advocate of microdosing. And here's why. He was a, a big buff Marine, right? And he had gone off to serve several, um, several sequences out in different events around the planet. And, you know, when he comes home to his wife and child, that was not a big enough drama for his brain to, you know, settle into. You think all I want to do is go home. But when you go home, the brain is wired for trauma, it's wired for battle, it's wired for fight or flight. So again, he noticed that he was craving things that were destructive and doing things that were outside of what his family dynamic wanted to do. He wasn't able to hold a job, he lost a business, he had issues with his, you know, keeping his wife, you know, um, keeping his wife uh, there, right, because of, of the fights that they would have and the infidelity and things like that around. Again, it's that extreme need for adrenaline. And then he was introduced to microdosing, which he was doing about every 72 hours 
And I'm not going to tell you what he was doing. You'll have to come learn about that. But he was doing this uh, microdosing process every 72 hours at such a small dose that what he was able to do was get present and allow his anxiety to be here instead of here right and unpack his baggage and today i'm so proud of this guy um he has opened up crossfit gyms all over and is now actively working in his purpose where he is helping people facilitate great change through consistency and discipline and redirected his entire reality from destructive to creative again and I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but if you are veterans out there, then usually what you get when you get home is a pile full of medication to help you deal with your stress, anxiety, and panic, or whatever pain you have acquired. And all that does is keep you needing the more of the medication. The greatest thing about microdosing is that it's not forever. It's teaching your brain that it is a pharmacy. And if you've ever experienced anything, you know, I could tell you right now summons the feeling and the smell and the sensation of a chocolate chip cookie, right? Well, you probably have that if you're in America and you could summons that and your brain could give you all the same hormones and sensations from a memory. So as we begin to microdose, what we're doing is reintroducing that medication into the shelves of the brain and therefore very soon will be completely sovereign in our ability to create our reality and also heal and mend what is broken inside of us if that is without needing anything outside of us. So I hope you guys check out my website, jessicaalstrom.com. And my uh, academy is Quantum Method. And this is really where you we can kind of embody everything that we have done and everything we still need to do and not feel guilt and shame about what's undone and allow that mediator point of gentle healing, gentle awareness, gentle allowing, accepting, rebuilding from basically all of the broken pieces to make the stained glass that you were always here to be in the mosaic. You were never here to be perfect. You know, you were here to pick up the pieces and then redesign them because the pieces that were built, the pieces that you had were built by someone else. And so they never really worked right for you. You've never really been able to attract the right people because you haven't been the right person for yourself. So all of that has to come undone. And, but in order for you to be able to sit and put that puzzle back together, you've got to be able to feel safe. You've got to feel centered. You've got to feel balanced. You've got to have time. You can't be looking over your shoulder every time you try to put your pieces back together. You can't be looking for another piece outside of you. And, and this is really where we're heading. So thank you guys for joining me. Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. And this is our conclusion of second Sunday for May. Um, be looking out for these openings all across the country in the U.S. and internationally, Quantum Fitness and different apothecaries. My apothecary downtown is the Alchemist Apothecary, and we will be carrying everything from the most ancient, ancient medicinal medicines to the future of of quantum medicine all under one roof in one house and we'll be offering lots of free seminars that will be streaming on live if you're not here in kansas with me and we will be able to teach this science of microdosing through mediation and our quantum fitness circuit training which is about instead of waiting for the trigger we just have a room called the unconscious room and we just go in there instead of waiting for the attack waiting for the trigger waiting for the breakup waiting for the bad news we're like, we know it's all in that room. We're just going to go in that room. And we call that the unconscious room. And we have an, a subconscious room, a conscious room, and a superconscious room. And in those four rooms, we're basically deliberately healing what it is that is waiting for us in physical reality before. And that is the science of biohacking. So thank you guys for joining me. And I will see you guys all in the classroom. Or I will see you here in Kansas. Or I will see you in one of our centers in the future. Have a great Mother's Day and enjoy. Remember, April, April showers bring the Mayflower.